Welcome back everybody with all the work that I have going outside right now with the new building and whatnot. I haven't had any time to be in the shop here to do any work on the H. Plus I'm still waiting for the paint to finish fully curing to decide what we're going to do with that orange peel effect on the sheet metal. So I don't have any new shop content for you, but a channel viewer asked a very good question in the comments section yesterday that I thought would make an excellent video response. That didn't come out right. It would be excellent for a video response. We are not starting over at this point, so let's get to it. Keith Workington says, Hello, senior and junior. I am re-watching some of your Super M playlist. Thank you very much. Because I'm trying to do some research, and then I thought maybe I should ask you both. I have a Farmall M, which is seized, and a friend of mine has a W6 engine he says is in good shape, and he says it will fit in my M perfectly fine with no changes. Do you gentlemen know or know who I could contact to find out for sure I don't want to waste my time and money? Thanks. Now, I don't have a McCormick W6 here to use for an example, but we've got a Farmall Super M, we've got a Farmall H, and we've got two McCormick W4s. And because the Farmall H and the McCormick W4 are just a scaled down version of the Farmall M and McCormick W6, they'll be the perfect stand in. Now, in a nutshell, the Farmall H and the McCormick W4 share the same engine. The Farmall M and the McCormick W6 share the same engine, at least from here back. There's gonna be some differences in the front cover and those differences have to do with how the engine attaches to the rest of the chassis. So in the Farmall H and Farmall M, you've got these flat side irons that run down each side of the engine. And the engine at the front will attach to these side iron channels with these two long bolts. They go through the channels, they go through these cast iron blocks and thread into the engine block itself. So the engine block in a W4 or a W6 is going to have this little boss right here with the threaded holes for these two long bolts. But looking at the 48 W4, those threaded holes do not get used. There is no cast iron block. There are no side irons. There are no long bolts. Instead, they use a different front cover that has uh, like a machined abutment at the front of it, right behind the crank pulley that uses this mount here that anchors the front of the engine to the inside of this large cast iron tub frame that is particular to the W series tractors, both the W4s and the W6s, as well as the early Super W6s. One other key difference is this flat adapter plate, if you will, that bolts to the back of the engine block in the Farmall H and Farmall M and matches the shape of the front of the bell housing. That plate will have to be taken off of the Farmall M block and put onto the back of the engine that comes out of the W6 because as you can see, we've got some different pieces here and it anchors into, once again, this heavy cast iron tub a little differently at the back of the block. Not deal breakers though. So to recap, a quick front cover change, new gasket, not that bad of a job. A quick rear adapter plate changeover, again, not that bad of a job, unless you get into the clutch and flywheel and find that it needs to be reclutched because that's how my look usually goes. And I am not gonna say anything more because I don't wanna jinx it, but you should be able to take that W6 engine and with minimal difficulty, fit it into that Farmall M chassis. I should also clarify though, as long as we are here, if it happens to be an engine from a later build Super W6 or a Super W6 TA that had the high low range torque amplifier, those engines, or I should say those tractors, went back to those flat side iron channels that went down each side of the engine. So if it's one of those later Super W6 or Super W6 TA engines, chances are it's already got a, a front cover on it that is gonna match the requirements for the M. You can use those side mounts with the blocks and pretty much adapter plate at the back and you'd be set to go. Just wanted to throw that out there because I think it, it was worth mentioning. So yeah, this was uh, a very good question to just roll into um, a video response. I think it was a lot easier than trying to type all that out and the back and forth technical information. And besides others might find some of this info helpful too. So I thank you all for watching. I need to get rolling again. 
and I hope to see you all back next time.